Hi, and welcome back to another tutorial on Blueprint Communications. This time we're going to look at the Event Dispatcher and talk about how we might use it in our projects. Before we get started, let's take a look here at an example of uh, a radio tower and a radio receiver. This best describes the event dispatcher in that the blueprint or class that is doing the event dispatching, the radio tower here, is uh, uh, sending out a one-way communication into the world, into the um, out into the scene that it exists in. And then anyone out in the world uh, with a reference to that dispatcher will be able to pick up on that signal so we can have um, multiple items in the world um, listening in on that particular frequency, so to speak. Um, and in this situation, only the receivers need to have references to the dispatcher. The dispatcher doesn't really care. It just broadcasts the signal out um, into the world. So let's take a look here in the content examples project at how they've implemented the event dispatcher. Open up the blueprint communications level. Hit play here so we can see what's going on. Run over to the next display room. Okay, here we have the um, event dispatcher function that's called in a level blueprint, in the level blueprint. You can walk up to it the button broadcasts an event that the light picks up and then here is the same event dispatcher function uh, example except for that the actual dispatching is done inside of the logo the spinning logo class let's take a look at these two examples first off we have the button uh, the broadcast button we'll take a look at this here they have set this up with uh, an event dispatcher. If you look here in the bottom left, we've got a button toggled uh, event dispatcher created. They've added an input, uh, a Boolean input, and then they've called the event dispatcher here. And then if we go back out to the level, we'll take a look at the level blueprint. Here we can see that the uh, there's an event set up to dispatch the broadcast call. And then um, it has a reference to the light and it calls the light toggle. So how they've created this is essentially they've selected the um, broadcast button. And in the level blueprint, you can right click, say, add an event, a uh, default, add button toggled. Now that will add whatever broadcast uh, or whatever dispatch function that's been put onto that uh, light. You can have access to it in that way. And then they've just simply taken the light from within the scene here. You can right click and get a reference to it. And then they've just simply got the toggle light function um, there and called it that way. And then use the event dispatcher to, to drive the light. Pretty much the same thing with this next example, except for that instead of in the level blueprint, the dispatch is done here inside of the spinning logo. Let's take a look at that. Uh, so the way that they bind this is on a, on event begin play. They actually have a link to or a reference to the button, at which point they bind an event. So if you take a look down here, there's a, a variable that is attached to um, in the level. You can see here it's attached to this uh, broadcast button. And then, oops. Um, so at begin play, they're basically binding the toggled event to that dispatch, and then they link a function uh, for the logo to stop and start spinning. And that's essentially how they do these examples here. So let's create our own. I'm going to make a new folder, name it tutorial. I'm actually gonna put it in the main content folder here. In that folder, we're gonna create a new blueprint class, actor class. It's going to be called BP underscore tutorial button. And we're also going to need a class for our spinning logo. We'll just call it tutorial logo. Oops. Let's jump into our button class here. We're going to need a static mesh to show the button. Here we go. 
we're also going to need a collision box to detect the player when they walk up. And we did this earlier in the tutorial, but it's been, or in the tutorial series, but it's been a while and uh, I don't have that project anymore. So we're just gonna recreate it. So in the event graph here, um, let's just clear out some of this stuff. I'm gonna add some events for this box collision. We're gonna do a begin overlap and an end overlap events here. We're also gonna add a, an event dispatcher to this item. So let's just add a tutorial button clicked. Call it that. Um, we're actually gonna go over here and add an input on it, uh, the Boolean state of that button. And then when we have these collision events, we're just gonna drag this out and say call, hook it up to the begin overlap. We're gonna call it, um, let me compile and save here. Refresh this so we get the, the name. Uh, the state is going to be on when we're overlapping, and then when we end overlap, we're going to call it and make sure the state's off here. Compile and save, make sure everything's happy. Oops. All right, that should be it for the button. Um, let's place this in the world here, and then we'll have our logo here as well. Pull this up a little bit. Let's work on the logo. We're going to need a static mesh for this too, so pull up a static mesh. There is a model included in this project called the SM underscore UE4 logo. Let's put this up here. Um, and we're also going to make uh, a variable to hold the reference to the button. Now we're going to make this of type um, BP underscore tutorial button. There we go. Uh, we're going to put this up uh, public. Let's compile and save this. Go back to the scene. Now, if we've got our logo selected, our um, button variable we just set up is going to show up here. Let's get the dropper and connect it up to our button here. All right. Let's jump back into the logo. Um, now that we've got the button connected up, we're actually going to drag a reference out here, get the button. Um, since it knows what this is, um, we're actually going to be able to call the um, bind event to tutorial button clicked right here. And we can get that because we made that event dispatcher in that class. We're going to hook this up to begin play. Then we are going to oops, hook this up to begin play. Then we're going to create a custom event. You can just click and drag out somewhere and just type in custom and it'll allow you to create a new custom event. It doesn't really matter what we call this. I'm just going to use a print string to make sure that everything's working here for the test. Um, and we're just going to print whether it's true or false here like this. Let's compile and save and test out and see what we've got here. Run over to our example station. Walk up here and it says true. Walk away, it says false. Okay, great. Now we know our event dispatcher is working. Um, let's actually make it do some rotation here. So I'm just going to do my own thing with the logo. So what I'm going to do actually is uh, on event tick, I'm going to set up a um, add rotation on the static mesh here to get a spinning, uh, oops, add rotation, add relative lo uh, rotation. We're going to connect it up here and then just enter one over here for the amount to add. I have a habit of compiling and saving. Uh, the most important thing about this is um, this is going to rotate obviously all the time. So let's go up to class defaults and just start with tick um, disabled. Uncheck that box there. And then when our custom event fires, we're actually going to get um, the tick enabled function for this actor. Set actor tick enabled like this. We're going to just say um, when the button fires, we're going to set the enabled state on that. Compile and save. Let's run back into the level. Test this out again. All right, so when I walk up uh, to the button, it looks like we've got spinning and stopping going on there. This is great. This is exactly what we wanted. Now, this is all well and good, but the power of the event dispatcher comes in where you can have just tons of these guys around there can even be different classes 
um, all listening for the event dispatch that's happening out of this um, broadcast class, in this case, a button. So if I hit play here, we'll just take a look how easy it is to expand this functionality. And you see they all turn on and off here. So that's the gist of the um, basics of the event dispatcher. Um, here we've used it in our blueprint classes as opposed to using the level blueprint um, like they did in 2.1. This is a very powerful tool and it's especially good for when you need to have a broadcast going out to items in the world, but you don't necessarily know what those items are ahead of time. So thanks a lot for listening. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll have another one coming for you guys soon. Thanks.